Hey there, it's Hana, and welcome to the channel where I make pixel art game assets for beginners. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create different types of bushes for side scroller and top down games. So, without further ado, let's get started! Most of the time, bushes look quite simple, often being small and elliptical or oval shaped. So, just picture a bush with somewhat a rounded form, perhaps with lumps and some spiky leaves poking out around the edges. Creating your bush design depends on the kind of game you're looking for. So, for example, if you're working on a side-scrolling game, it's ideal to show more of the bush's side angle, whereas for the top-down game, showing a bit more of its upper size would be more preferable. Let's warm up with some side-scroller bushes. Start by using the darkest color to create the bush shape. Generally, you would want to create something that resembles an arch shape. Think of it as having a flat bottom, and a curvy upper section with lumpy formations around the edges. Given that our leaves are short and spiky, the bush's edge will also jut outwards a bit. Now let's take our second darkest color in the palette and start drawing the top part of the bush. With the lower part no longer restricted by the ground, we'll have the freedom to make leaves angled somewhat downwards. However, it's important not to go overboard, as this part is still in proximity to the bottom. You can consider that the leaves here are still somewhat compressed or influenced by the layers below. By the way, when it comes to leaves, it's a good idea to practice sketching them in various orientation beforehand, as we'll be using them to create the leaf texture for the entire bush. For instance, you could draw a leaf pointing upward like this, or maybe another one aligning more to the side, and another one facing downwards, so on and so on. Essentially, you're creating a sort of a reference guide for the leaves you'll be incorporating. So like on this side over here, I would want a leaf shape that is facing in the 8 o'clock directions, whereas on this side, I would want a leaf that is facing the 4 o'clock directions. Not all leaves will be facing the same direction, which creates room for a variety of leaf patterns. At the same time, you will want your leaves to be on different heights. This gives the bushes a more dynamic look, avoiding the rigid basic cone shape. After placing the leaves, you can create a line going through all of these patterns. Afterwards, select a paint bucket tool, press G, and fill in the entire upper section here with the color you just picked. This will be the top section of the bush, where most of the light will touch. Not every leaf in this region falls under the shadow. A few leaves might stretch out from underneath, which is why we can add some foliage here, slightly apart from the upper portion. Next up, let's introduce another layer of highlight. The goal is to continue constructing these foliage layers on top of each other. Pay attention to where you position these highlights. Usually, you want to align them above the leaves we just sketched, rather than placing them randomly. This placement is important since players often rely more than just color to identify the types of bush or tree they're encountering. A distinct leaf shape can help them differentiate between various plants, like an unripe blueberry bush or a lavender bush. As you can see here, I'm drawing the leaves right on top of those we just drew. This is to re-emphasize the sharp and elliptical shape we want from the start. Moving on, we'll add another layer on top. Much like our previous steps, begin by outlining the individual leaves, draw a line through them, and then proceed to color the entire upper section. You would also want to add highlights for the leaves here, as they kind of sticks out from the shadow. Let's add our top layer. Follow the same steps as before. You could even consider making the entire top section with a well-defined leaf shape, as opposed to the larger forms we've been using. The choice is yours, and it depends on the artistic style you're aiming for. 
Here, I'm just simply repeating the same process but with a lighter color. I went for the abstract look, so I'm just coloring the whole upper section. If you feel like the top layer is too flat, you can pick a dark color and draw in some gaps. For example here, you can see me adding the gaps on the left side of the bush. I'm adjusting the leaf shape so that it curves upward. And now we can kind of imagine that these lines would continue to stretch upwards, as suggested by the lines we just created. I'll add the highlights onto the layers below as well. At this point, you can see that the bush is almost finished. Maybe some tweaks here and there, and you'll get the bush shape that you're looking for. I'm just fixing up this area here by adding more leaves to the side using the fourth color in the palette. Okay, great. By now, you'll notice the gradient taking shape, giving the bushes a bit of depth. You can also add shadows to the top leaves. Let's add an outline. I typically do this manually to maintain control over the outer shape of the bush. You might even want to make the outline for the top part slightly lighter by selecting the darkest color from the palette, which already excludes the outline color, and lining it along the brightest points of the bush. This is also a good opportunity for you to reassess the bush shape. If you feel like it's leaned more towards the left or the right, you can just select an area and move it as you see fit. To add some finishing touch, you can take a highlight color, just slightly brighter, add it onto the rear edge of the leaves like this. It makes it so that these leaves, especially the tip, look like they're sticking out from the bush. It works especially well for top-down tiles, as it helps define the boundary between the upper side parts a bit more distinctly. I'll show you how it would look like with the top-down bushes in the next part. And with few more adjustments, we have the final look for our side-scroller bush. When comparing the side scrolling bush to the top down version, you'll notice a few distinctions. The top down bush features a larger highlight region and notably a shadow at the top. This happens because in cases where the top part doesn't completely cover the rear area, we get a peek at the object's backside. That back area usually sits furthest away from our view, which is at the top. While the side-scrolling bushes remain bright throughout the upper portion, the top-down bush will have its brightness area shifted down a bit to make room for the rear part. Let's draw a top-down version of the previous bush to see the difference. Let's create a bush with a sphere-like shape. Imagine the overall shape is like an arch, but with a slightly curved bottom. Then hit G and fill in the area you just created. Up top, let's add some lumps and perhaps some jagged lines along the edges. Just like in side scroller bushes, leaf patterns in top down bushes also sits on a line. The only difference is that this line curves in like an oval shape. This is because in top down games, all objects are angled down to show more of its top side. And that is why you can see this area up here. To be honest, it can be any shape you want, like an oval shape, a square, but generally you want to show that there is a surface up here and it is not concealed like in the side scroller version. This also kind of explains why we see the highest point of the bush shifted down a bit, which is this ring up here. It's because when we see the top surface, what we're really seeing is a surface that is angled down to match the view of our eye. And if we compare the center of the top-down surface to the side scroller surface, we can see that this center here is lower than the latter. And if we stack the layers which share the same center line, we will get this shape. With that in mind, let's add in our highlight area, starting from the bottom up. You want to draw the leaves based on this curved line right here. Other than that, we can repeat the same process as we did with the side scroller ones. Generally, you would want these leaves to be facing in the direction of their position. So those on the left would be facing the left and vice versa. 
Just remember to fill in the color for the top area. To take it up a notch, you can add in maybe one or two leaves that face in a different direction. If you feel like it might mess up the leaves orientation, you can just push these one or two leaves up a bit to kind of separate them from the main leaves below. Moving forward, let's bring in another highlight layer using that third color from our palette. For a quick refresher on how to draw these foliage layer, just flip back to step 4 and 5 in the previous design. I'll leave their timestamps below. Foliage usually align parallel to the highest point of the bush. In the side scrolling view, the top is positioned along a line, while in the top down perspective, it's an oval shape that is slightly shifted downward from the top. In our top down bush, we're able to glimpse the space behind the highest point, which corresponds to the rear of the bush. As we move towards the back, the leaves generally point upwards. Nonetheless, keep in mind that we're only catching a brief glance of the rear so the leaf facing upward shouldn't be too large. With this highlight color, add in the leaves at the bottom like the previous step. Then slowly shift the leaf's direction to upwards. After that, just color in the middle part and maybe redraw some of the gaps if you needed to. I'll add more leaves below to give the bushes more volume. Continue with the last layer just like what we did in the previous step. Feel free to get creative with the appearance of the top layer. You might consider experimenting by sketching each individual leaf shape if you're aiming for that touch of realism. Don't forget to add an outline. And our last step, which we have discussed before in our previous bush, is to take a slightly brighter highlight and line it along the edge of these leaves. This can work really great with top-down tiles as it lends a subtle separation between the upper and the lower portion. It's entirely up to you whether you want to give this look a try. Now let's make a bush with a linear shape leaf. You might come across bushes looking like this, which is typical of the linear leaf bush. As you can see, the shape and physical characteristics of these leaves bring about a notably different form for the bush compared to the one we previously created. So if you want to give your environment a different feel, you can try out this look. Create the shape for the bush. You can choose the shape of your choice. For me, I'll create a more rounded shape. Linear leaves usually have a sharper appearance compared to the elliptical ones. That's why we'll let the outer leaves stretch further towards the outer edges. Additionally, notice how as these leaves extend outward, they often curve to the side as bended by gravity. So you want to keep in mind when you draw these bushes that spikes don't always project in a completely straight line. This curvature becomes more significant when you move down to the bottom area. Leaves here are visibly curved, so imagine the entire leaf taking on a crescent or an arrow shape, instead of having just a tiny bend at the tip. You can draw the leaf that extend outwards in various directions, but do keep in mind that there's a natural flow. For example, if a leaf is on the left side, it's likely gonna bend towards the left and vice versa. Take a lighter color and add in the leaves. You want to have the leaves in the middle face upwards and the ones on the side curved downwards, following the shape we've just laid out. See the spot right here where the leaf starts its downward bend? You want to kind of mimic this curvature to maintain a consistent flow with its overall shape. Otherwise, it might look a bit out of place. Now here's a bit of a tricky part. You see the area down here that we just spare? This is the area where the leaf curves down and face in our direction. In this area, you will want to really tuck that leaf in. 
The closer you get to the middle, the more you want the curve to resemble a straighter line. Don't worry if this concept is new to you. A helpful practice is to draw all the leaf's orientation around this pole, which will serve as the bush's stem. So imagine all the leaves arranged in a circle around it, facing outwards. The leaves facing either the left or right gives us a full view of their side profile, which allows us to see their entire curve shape. But as we move to the middle, the leaf will be oriented towards us, which is why we can't see its side angle, or in other words, its curvature. Back to our bush, imagine that there is a stem here. From that stem, add curved leaves facing in the outward direction. You can take the leaves you just recently created as a reference point and position them as you see fit. Preferably, you will want them facing in the direction of the side they are on. So, like if it's placed on the left side, it will face towards the left. At this point, you just want to think about the leaves' position and their general direction instead of getting the perfect shape. After blocking in the shapes and getting their general form, you can now think about the leaves in the back. Maybe you want the leaves to space out a bit more, or maybe you want the leaves to face downwards, or upwards, or maybe you want them to push in. There are a lot of changes you can make depending on the style that you're going for. Okay. Hey, yeah, so, um, I accidentally picked the wrong color, but you know, like accidents like this happens all the time It's part of the art process and you kind of have to deal with it at one point. Oh, biggie, no biggie. Uh, but you know what? This is fine. This will be a good opportunity for us to fix this color problem. Now, if you encounter it, like maybe halfway through, you want to introduce a darker color because the palette changed or something. Or you're just following along with this tutorial and you just picked the wrong color just like me. <laughs> Anyways, let's fix this thing. Start by taking the darker color and place it at the bottom here. We will go from the bottom up. You want to place these dark colors underneath the leaves, just covering the area around these bent leaves. Now let's add the shadow part for these leaves. This area represents the part of the leaves that lies in the shadow, and up here is where they begin to curve outwards. As they curve outwards, they enter the light area. That's why you'll see a crescent shape here for the highlight and a long downward arrow shape for the shadow. Now let's add some highlights to the leaves. The leaves higher up will catch more lights, while the one lower down will receive less. For example, up here, the highlight covers most of the leaf area, but down here, you'll see a thin line of light on the leaf. When you're dealing with leaves that curve towards us, be sure to put the highlights on the outer side of the bush. And for those that are situated a bit lower, I'll place a highlight along the edge of the leaf blade, preferably the side closer to the stem. This gives the lines a sharper and more distinct look. You can add in some random blades, which are those that don't conform to this rule, cause after all, these are natural bushes. But you would want to keep them small in size, like a sneaky little detail, so it doesn't make the bush lean towards any side. It's starting to take form. At this stage, you can consider adding an outline. Personally, I prefer to do this manually because it gives me better control over the bush's outer shape. This way, if I notice anything unusual about its form, I can easily make adjustments to ensure everything looks just right. The last step is to take the lightest color and add a bit of highlight. I tend to apply it not at the top, but more towards the middle, so it looks as if the leaf is bent backwards. I'll also include highlights for the leaves below, focusing mostly on the inner parts to give them that sharp blade-like appearance. With some fixes on how you see fit, and we're done! To turn this into a top-down bush, we will have to curve the bottom part and shift the top part down about one-third of their height. Now, let's work on the top. Remember when we made those leaves that circled around the upper area? 
we're going to do something similar here. So these one at the front will bend down and those below should showcase more of their top side rather than the shadow part. So for those leaves below, you can select the area and move down. I'm also adjusting the outline for the top and bottom so it looks a bit more rounded. And this is our final result. If you make it to the end of this video, comment down below which part was the most helpful and I'll be sure to respond to any of your messages. And until the next video, stay tuned!